I'm working on this arrangement for Toby Wigway and the National Symphony for a concert at the Kennedy Center next month. And I've gotten to the climax of this particular song. This is not the biggest climax in the world, uh, but it's definitely the, the most intense and biggest part of this particular song. You can see that I have these strings down here at the bottom. They actually come from the album version of this song. And I'm using them as a sort of a starting point. This version is a little different, so I'm not pasting them in religiously, but I am using them, yeah, as inspiration. So you can see there's a high violin part. And so I've got something sort of in the shape of it. A lot of license I've used here made it a little more interesting and soaring being the, the climax of the piece. And then I've got uh, from the original, here's this pizzicato part. Now I know from experience that a part like this in pizzicato is just not going to be heard in this sort of concert in this texture you know, with the whole orchestra playing. So it's kind of pointless to write it. You could just put that in and have them play it arco, short or bowed. And uh, it'll, you know, it'll come through. But I thought, you know, there's something here that I can work with and make it a little more Tim. So I'm just using the idea of a rising line. So you can see here now, this is my sort of rising version. And as it goes along, it just gets higher and higher until it meets the top here, comes up to where the violin one is. And it'll you know, just make this section grow in a really cool organic way. For the viola and cello, I've given them some short notes, just filling in the harmony that'll give it a nice pulse. And the basses are playing the bass part. There's a rhythm bass playing a synth bass, and there's a Hammond organ, and then we've got Toby and his background singers going. So the other things I've done in this section is I've got the trombones playing a pad, which is pretty standard for this, and a French horn counterline. Notice dynamically the strings are at forte so that they'll be full. The trombones are at mezzo forte so that they will, they will know to just feel a notch back and not be loud and aggressive. Horns similar, I just want a nice soaring line. It's in unison, it's in a great range to cut through. This is just gonna be magic here. They come up to a forte at the end and then the rest of the brass, the trumpets join to give us some brightness and then they crescendo, which will just push this whole thing through. And then there's a big drop off here where it's just claps and vocals. So it should be quite uh, effective. What are we gonna do with the woodwinds? There's a couple of things you could do. The most obvious and sort of cliched would be to just paste this line and put it in octaves or whatever. I'm kind of going through a period of not liking that sound of the flute mindlessly doubling the violins all the time. It's not really a cool sound. It's not needed here. Uh, the violins are going to cut. I mean, naturally, they're going to come through before anyone else in this sort of situation. So it's not like they need to be beefed up in this sort of way. So let's scratch that idea. Gone. Could give them chords. They could maybe play something like this, make it sort of like an organ texture, or they could double that and up the octave. That might be nice. But what would be more, Tim, would be to take this line and do something with it. You could just paste that around. I know there's a few notes out of range, but we'll deal with that later. You could do that. I wouldn't do that. There's a lot of unison going on. And obviously the range problems, some low oboe, we'd have to take some notes out. Um, and it's not gonna sound that pretty. But, and oh, and the other thing is, there's gonna be breathing issues. They'll probably all just breathe here and, and here. Uh, at the same time, which is fine. You won't notice it with everything going on, but I, I like to you know, plan things out so that we can glue this all together and create a really nice texture. So the first thing to do would be to split this to hock it, dovetail it or something like that. There's no actual dovetails in this yet, how I'm gonna do it, but we just split parts out. So let me grab this, put that down there, and then I'm just gonna go and alternate cells so right and then take that a 
Right. So that is one way of doing it. Of course, fixing the out of range notes, which will be solved by adding the clarinets into this. But I want to complete this line before I get too carried away. So here we want to fill in these gaps. It's a, you know, it's a waste having them do nothing. So quite often I will have things hang on. Uh, if you look at my error code seven blog post, I uh, show an example where I do this. Also in my it's staggering post, and I'll link all of this in the description, there's examples of this sort of technique. So let's go, let's let these notes hang if they can, or go to the nearest chord note to help play and glue this together. So in this case, we get to a D flat. Our next chord is a C7 sharp nine. So we could go to an E flat or we could go to a C. And I think in this case, the C is probably the best bet because we can just double the violins for a second. So let's pop that down the octave and blah, blah, blah. Great. Now this one, next bar, we continue through and this is actually a D flat major nine. You can see we've got the ninth here in the trombone. So let's have them hang on. All right, so that's good. The next bar, C minus seven, but we've got this violin thing again. So let's have them double that. Get that down the octave. And then here we've got uh, D flat, it's a major nine again. So they can just hang on an E flat. Now we could have them double the, uh, the violin cascading line, but that will, get in the way of this. So let's just have them hang there. This next one, we can continue up to a B flat or we can come down and rest on the G. I'm gonna do the G, that's gonna give us a nice sound here where it stops and then this one goes past it, which ha actually happens in the first phrase of this as well. And then the last one, we can go up and uh, let's hang on the C and that will repeat that same same pattern of the uh, the note going up here and then this one going past it, which is a nice texture. All right, so we'll get rid of those slurs because we're going to redo them in a minute. Now this part here, they can go up to an E flat. I'm just going to do this a bit quicker now. They can go up to an F. They can hang on the E flat. And then this one here can go, uh, let's go, up, just keep it the closest note will be the a flat so let's go to that and then here we can double the violin like we do with the other part so let's put that there and then uh, let's tie you all right so we'll get rid of the slurs here and then right so and now i'll slur these so with this sort of pattern, you don't have to worry about the breathing because they're never going to breathe at the same time. So it's just going to glue together and you won't, you won't know anything. So let's do that. So that is cool. Right. Now we could then just double this up and in considering this range, it will be great to have the clarinets there. So I'm just going to paste that down. And then that was Siri talking to me for some reason. I don't know why my phone started to answer me. Anyway, so I've got the clarinets there. So obviously I want to weed out a couple of notes here that are out of range. Now I could just pull out the B flat, but rhythmically they're going to play much better if they come in on a stronger beat, which is the and. We're quite slow. So that's going to be much cooler just to do that. So now I think I've weeded out all of the out of range notes. Now you're going to keep going to uh, here. Oops. And then we're going to, start, let me just grab these, paste them down. So when we get to here, we're going to drop the octave. I don't want the clarinet going that high and this will add some support. All right, so there we go. That should be pretty cool. Now we have the oboe. What can we do to the oboe? 
well, it'd be nice if they glue this one more notch and they just take the highest part of each line because this the lower notes are not going to be sorry i missed pasting the, the filter all right there we go so let's have this just play the tops and then get rid of this beat right and we'll slur them but let's do the same trick now so they should play perhaps a C oops wrong note and then here they can go up to the E flat so they're going to just join with whatever's going on I should add the ties while I'm at it this goes to an F and this one goes to back to the C this one goes to the E flat and then here we go E flat again. Oops. Uh, here we go up to A flat. And here we go D. And now hang on the B flat. Hang on the C. Oops. And then, all right, so do I have to put any more ties in? Yes, one here. Okay. And now slur these phrases so give us a nice little articulation on each beat two and four that's the other cool thing that happens with all of these textures is by having different attacks at different times you get this little sort of this percussive percussive variant to the sound as if um, as opposed to everyone just slurring their way through it all or tonguing the whole time so I think we're pretty good. And then bass clarinet, let's just uh, give them, they could just double, double this bass part here. It's in a good range for them. They can go down low there, would be nice. Uh, this last bit here, I'll worry about another time. Okay, so let's have a listen to this without the woodwinds. So I'm just gonna delete them, those ones. Sorry, I should have scrolled that down a little bit. But now let me just undo that. So I'm going to play just the woodwinds now so you can hear what this texture sounds like. So it just gives this cool sort of slightly overlapping effect that you wouldn't get if you just pasted up the same thing. It takes a little bit of time, but you know, that's what I do. And instead of having a real life, I waste time doing this. Anyway, now I'm just gonna play you the whole thing and then get back to work. And if anyone's wondering, uh, I'm not hosting these sounds in Finale. It's just playing note on and off pretty much out to this template I have loaded in Reaper that hangs around in the background all day long so that I don't have to load any sounds. When we do a proper demo for the project, I'll probably use Note Performer because it's going to react a little better uh, and I'll use it with the 
the woods and the brass probably come from Note Performer and the strings will use uh, cinematic studio strings. But right now, this is actually uh, the precursor to Note Performer, which is the weavy woods and brass and just the aria strings that uh, the Garrett ones that come with Finale. But it's great for just quick, dumb playback so you can hear the notes and not worry about anything else. Anyway, let me know if anyone's got any comments or questions about this sort of thing. And I'll see you all soon with something else.